Hello, this is Faith of Faith and Books, and I thought I would do a book review. I finished another book. This was a reread. It's uh, The Corinthian by Georgette Hare. I'm just holding this camera, so hopefully I don't jiggle too much. Uh, this will be a brief review. Um, it was a reread, uh, but I had I have very little memory of the plot. I sort of remembered the, the main characters' names and vaguely well, what had happened. But, um, so it was, you know, it's good sometimes to have a bad memory because you get to enjoy something over and over again. <laughs> um, but this one, um, you know, was a standard, um, romance by Hare. She, um, she, the main character is, oh my gosh, his name's gonna, Richard, oh my goodness, he, it suddenly, uh, flew out of my head. Anyway, his first name's Richard, and, um, he is uh, a typical hair uh, uh, main character in that he is this handsome, wealthy, sardonic, bored with life, overly privileged, uh, yet, um, you know, very fit, very uh, athletic, a good whip, which means that he's really good with horses, um, and all that sort of thing. That's, this is her romantic hero. And uh, he is being forced pretty much by circumstances and society's conventions to, into a marriage. He's 28 or 29. And, um, you know, this it's a family that they've known for a long time. And the family is in great um, financial problems because of the gambling habits of the father and uh, one of the sons named Beverly Brandon. So he's supposed to marry the sister, Melissa Brandon. And uh, he doesn't really want to. He's, you know, she's all right, but he's not in love with her. And in fact, he's never been in love. And so uh, he's sort of resigning himself to family pressure. And then he, um, so he goes out and he gets drunk when he realizes that this is going to be his fate. And he's quite drunk and he's walking home. And suddenly there's this young boy that comes, um, <sighs> comes dropping out of this window on some, uh, uh, you know, a, a rope made out of uh, bed sheets. And it isn't quite long enough to reach the ground. So he, you know, he's quite stunned and astonished and drunk. And he catches this young uh, man in his arms. And he, I think pretty much he realizes right away that it's actually a woman, or a young woman. Uh, she's 17 years old, and her name's Penelope Creed, but she goes by Penn, so her name's Penn Creed. She's running away because she's being forced into a marriage to her cousin that she does not want to marry. And she's running away because a long time ago, she had a childhood friend, and they had pledged to marry. They hadn't seen each other in five years, but she's going to run away to him. So, um, so drunkenly, um, Richard, whatever his last name was, Brinsley? Jeez, I... I don't have my Kindle. I read it on the Kindle. Anyway, so um, drunkenly he decides to assist her because he realizes in his drunkenness, he's, he realizes that she's vulnerable and that she doesn't really realize what she's doing or the danger she could fall into. So he decides to accompany her. So he goes on this wild, it's only three days, but it's just um, this wild um, world of adventures and all sorts of complicated plot. And it, it really struck me as very Shakespearean because it had this sort of cross-dressing. Um, and we're supposed to believe that everybody knew, assumed she was a boy, even though she's a girl and she's not doing anything to disguise her voice or anything like that. Um, although a couple of people do remark that it's rather an effeminate young, young man. Anyway, all sorts of complications ensue in, in only the way that hair can do. And... Um, and it's a romance. Uh, I have to get over, I always have to get over the, uh, my visceral um, repugnance at the age difference. A 17 year old and a 28 or 29 year old, I guess isn't that bad, but I don't know. I always have trouble with that. Um, so you have to get over that and you sort of have to, you know, you have to suspend your disbelief when it comes to um, people buying that this young girl is actually a boy. Um, but it's fun. It's a really fun read. It's very Shakespearean in the humor and the situations. Um, and there's even a reference to the Capulets, Capulets, uh, that Hare makes. 
Um, so yeah, quite enjoyable. I really liked it. It was a quick read. Um, yeah, I give it two thumbs up um, if you want a, a light but intelligent, witty, um, funny, uh, very diverting uh, romance. Um, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. So um, I think I'm not going to go into any more depth. I don't want to do any spoilers, although you know how it's going to end, right? All the romances end the same way. Um, I do have to say that I noticed this time in particular, hair often has, you know, the ending. It ends where they have their first kiss. And it's often she has it be a very rough kiss. I think she no, said ruthless kiss this time. And, you know, that might be satisfying in a romance, but in real life, I mean, I'm old now, so it's been a really long time. But I do remember in my youth a couple of times having those kind of, you know, <laughs> rough kisses or whatever. And I have to say, I did not find them comfortable. I, I would not want to be kissed ruthlessly. <laughs> I, I found that I, I much preferred tenderness to ruthlessness. So anyway, it's satisfying in a book, but it's one of those things where maybe uh, in real life, not so much. All right, so that's it for me. I'm hiding out here in my garden because I have cleaners coming. I started getting cleaners in because I just stopped being able to, like, scrub bathtubs and stuff. And uh, it's so invasive. I want to just go and hide while they're here because, oh, they're, they're washing windows right there. She can see me. Anyway, she probably thinks I'm on the phone just talking to somebody. Anyway, that's it for me. I hope you're doing well and happy reading.